Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. So I've had this Axminster Craft table saw for quite a few months now and I'm loving it. But the one thing you might have noticed is I've taken the sliding carriage off. Now, it works great, it's just a bit too big for this workshop. It sticks out too far. I found myself catching myself on it all the time. So I've taken it off and just gone to using the miter gauge. But there is a problem with using that, so I'll bring you in closer and show you. So, as the saw comes, this silver cast iron bit is the edge of the table. And this sliding carriage offers quite a lot of extra support to the left. With it taken off though, and just using a mitre gauge, you've only got a few centimetres support. So this is a wooden wing that I knocked up very quickly, and it works quite well. Since I made that though, Axminster released a new product and it's an extension wing, which is pretty much identical to my wooden one. Um, apart from the fact it's much heavier metal and I think would be much more stable than mine. Um, but what it also comes with is a new fence rail that then goes the whole length and it comes with you know, the tape measure as well. The thing is, I never really felt when I had this extension wing that I wished my fence would move to the left of the blade. It's not something I ever do. So I wasn't that fussed about it. But what I would like is extra rip capacity to the right. So I was thinking maybe I could re-drill and cut these mounting holes, put this on the right, move the fence over and have an extra, well, let me measure 25 centimeters of rip capacity. So let's uh, see if we can get this fitted. So the first job is to get all these bolts loosened. I'm not taking them all the way out and then I can get the old fence removed. With it removed, I can lay it against the new fence and use it as a template to mark out where the holes need to go. And I just use a Sharpie marker for this. I use a punch to mark out my holes and then I can get them drilled out. These don't just need to be holes, they need to be slots. So I then got it clamped up in the vise and used a hacksaw to cut down to the holes. Now I can get that new longer fence put in place and those bolts tightened back up onto it. The new wing obviously comes with pre-drilled holes, but they're on the wrong side and I can't just flip it around because it's got the mounting holes for the fence at the front. But I mark out where the holes would need to go and then again punch the position and get them drilled out. I get the supplied bolts put through the freshly drilled holes and then into the existing wing. Washers and nuts can go on the other side and then I can get it tightened up. There's also a couple of holes at the front which I can get bolts into to lock it down to the fence. Okay, so I've got this on and it works well. Now, the fence sticks out probably about 100 mil to this side, but I've got it flush with the cast iron top. So I could have had it more centralized, but I didn't want it to stick out more this way in case I want to take this wing off. Um, I'll talk more about if I'm going to keep this wing later. So the one thing I was concerned about is that this would droop a little. Um, it's moving a little because I've got it on a mobile base which is not locked down at the moment because I'm moving it around still. Um, but it's pretty secure. So I think if I'd made a wooden extension for the side, well, first it'd been pointless because I couldn't move the fence over, but that'd have been very wobbly. But with it attached to this new longer fence, that's actually pretty stable. But I've knocked together this simple bit of wood that I've stained black to solve three problems. First, I keep damaging my wall by knocking this saw against it. 
So this is going to go on the wall and stop that. It's going to give some extra support for this final 100 mil, which will actually increase my rip capacity. And I've got this little bit of wood sticking out, which will just hook under this wing and stop it drooping. So now let's get this attached to the wall. So I get a few screws driven through this into the wall and then I can get the table saw put into place and it fits like a glove. So that's it all together. I'm pretty pleased. It all needs a bit of a clean up. You can see I've got a bit of pink paint on there, which was rather stupid of me. But now the fence travels from this side to the right, all the way over to there. And actually it's got the knobs on the back for the auxiliary fence. So if we ignore, probably got about 74 centimeters of rip capacity, which is fantastic. And I can't see why I would ever need more than that. Now, there is one problem which I didn't foresee and I'll show you that. So I left a gap here for the hose for the crown guard to go, but it is not long enough. So it has to hang over the back of the table. So if I actually wanted to do the full rip capacity, I'd have to remove the hose, otherwise it would get in the way. So when I've got some money, I will buy a new hose that will fit there. So the other issue I want to address is an outfeed table. Now it comes with this pressed steel bit, which has slots for the mitre slots already cut into it. So that's good. And it offers quite a bit of support, but when you're cutting long lengths, you need more support. So I thought about getting a roller stand, but then that's a one trick pony. It's only used for the one thing, the table saw. Um, I don't kind of like that in my workshop. I had a bench before, but again, it took up a lot of space for just doing that. So what I've got, is one of these roller tool cabinets. So as you can see, it's far too short and needs to go up about 17 centimeters. So my plan is to build this up into a platform and then it can have some storage underneath. It can go on the back here just to offer a little bit of support or for longer lengths, maybe even turn it around that way. And when I'm not using it, it can just go back against the wall. So I've got this scrap of 18 mil MDF I'm gonna to use to build up the height. So I'm gonna get it ripped down, minus the thickness of the top I'm gonna to use. So I'm just gonna have it with three sides so that the front is open, so I can slide things in and out for some extra storage. I'm just going to get this glued and screwed together. So first I drill some pilot holes with a countersinking bit that I can get some glue applied and it all screwed together. Now for the top, I've got this bit of wood that's actually an off cut of an old drawing board. So it has some relief cuts in it to help keep it nice and flat. So this should work great. I'm just cutting it down to size slightly bigger than the tool chest. So it's gonna have a lip all around. I don't want this to have any sharp corners. So I'm just drawing a little round on the two front corners. Then I can take it over to the Clark drum sander and get those sanded down. I give everything a quick sand down and I round over the sharp edges a little. I then want to do something about that ugly looking MDF. So I'm going to use one of my favorites, some India ink. I just give it one coat and it really blackens it up so it's gonna match that roller cabinet. Now to get the top attached, I don't want any screws to go down through the top so I wanna get it attached from underneath and I'm gonna use some of these little L brackets that I have. 
I've got myself some new drill bits to help do this after Peter Millard from 10 Minute Workshop recommended these trend snappy bits, I got a set of their hinge drilling ones. Really great for drilling the center of a hole. There'll be a link to these down below on my tool page along with a lot of the other tools I use. With the top attached, I wanted to get some finish on it, but I didn't want to stain it black, so I thought I'd go for some badger wax. I just brush on a coat, leave it for about 10 minutes, and then buff it all off. This will also help work pieces slide nicely over it. And that's it all done. Now it can just get dropped into place. So that's this all done. Nice bit of space in there. I've got my mitre gauge in there and there's quite a bit of room. Might be able to stick some other jigs in there. Um, it's got holes for a handle on this and I haven't fitted it yet because I was waiting to see which side I wanted to because there's holes either side. So I think I'll get the handle fitted, then this can be easily moved around and I think it's gonna work great as an outfeed table or can just be moved out of the way. So this works great as an outfeed table, but the other thing I could do if I wanted some more space in here is remove my homemade extension wing and then when I wanna do some cross cutting, pull this round to the side as it's the same height as the table and that could act as some extra support. So I'm really pleased with the rip capacity and the outfeed table. This mitre gauge that I got a few years ago from Banggood works great, but what I really miss from the sliding table is the long fence. So I've got a new one. So I really like this mitre gauge, but it just needs the fence but Van Good have very kindly sent me a new one. This one comes with an 800 mil long fence, a stop, a tape measure, and some allo keys to adjust it all. So this new one with the red bar is slightly longer than the previous one, but there's a different system for locking it. So they both have nice aluminium handles to lock them, but as you can see, this one has little indents with the scale and this has a pin that goes in with different holes at different angles. Both seem to work really well. Both of them are nice and snug and slide well. And you can see, use a little Phillips screwdriver to tighten these plastic washers up to get the perfect fit. And it has got no play in there whatsoever. The fence just slides on. Then there's a couple of Allen keys behind just to tighten it up. Little flag stop or flip stop, just slides in, get locked in place, and it's got an adjustable little indicator there to work with the tape. So now I can get it set up and make a few test cuts. This really works great and it's gonna make my life so much easier. So that's it all done. Really pleased with this. Having all that rip capacity and a nice big work surface is great. Outfeed table works well. I always like this little mitre gauge, but having the 800 mil fence and the flip stop on one makes it even better. Um, they're both really accurate and a super nice fit into the mitre slots. So there I'll put links down below to Banggood and both of these. Um, I think you can get both of them in kits with different size fences or just on their own. So go and take a look at that if you're in the market for a new mitre gauge. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks to my patrons and please subscribe for more videos.